Okay. Today is gonna be fun. Like, I'm I'm excited for this one. I, on the last episode, made this guy. My very first climbing hold, and it is full of defects, and I think, as much as I'd love to kind of buff those defects out, I actually think I might just clear coat this one, park it on the desk, and treat that as like the oh, first thing I ever made on the CNC. But I want to do a improvement upon my first go. I am upgrading from quarter inch tooling to three eighths tooling and I got a very nice tool from Lakeshore Carbide. I'm hoping that that bit of bazooka status tooling will mean that the rigidity I'm currently dealing with is mitigated by the fact that this tool is just that awesome. I, that's what I'm really hoping. I'm gonna try to load up uh, the tool and start making the chips. I have just loaded my stock back onto the machine. I have gone and revised the parts. So now the old one had uh, full flute depth for that three quarter inch depth of cut of my quarter inch end mill. But now with the three eighths, uh, I can go a full inch and a half depth of cut. So I'm doing just shy of that, uh, 140 or 1.4, um, just so that way I can try to make a guarantee that I don't kind of collide with the bottom of my wasteboard. If if at all possible. Um, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to post correctly, so we're gonna set it up, send it. Let's get you installed, or get the program loaded, and get to making some chips. Okay, so we have the tool loaded up, our 3 8 inch end mill. We have the part loaded up. I have the program file loaded in. I have my zero set to my upper right hand corner with a little bit of leeway again such that I feel confident I'm not going to be covered into my wasteboard and I also feel pretty confident that uh, I won't be taking an immediate chunk out. I'll probably have a couple air passes, that's okay, that's intentional, and then after that we'll be getting after it. Start job, start, rip them time. You know when you have one of those moments of, uh, I think that was wrong? Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that was wrong. Shit. What the fuck? Uh... Okay. I think I cooked the- What the fuck happened? Uh, not from looking at the setup, it would appear that part of my problem with why I drove up and hit steps and had all the issues is a direct result of my nincompoopness. Clearly, that wasn't going to work. I don't have as much Z clearance with this new tool. So because I'm running out of Z travel on the last one, it tried to continue driving, freaked the fuck out, and then buried itself in. Why it drove to that same corner though, instead of off to the side and then running a pass, I haven't the foggiest idea. Uh, that part I'm gonna work on right this second. Hopefully I can figure out why I, or how I botched that. It's time for all the marbles. Uh, that's a lot of chatter. Okay, here's to possibly blind optimism. I wasn't necessarily at my full 75 thou step over. We're gonna... It did not like that at all. <laughs> well, this is why you test stuff, right? 
a hell of a lot easier to learn on this giant hunk of cheapo wood. I'm gonna go back to the cam. We're gonna adjust the step over back and I'm gonna see what we can get away with. Got through reprogramming it. We're now doing a 50,000 step over instead of 75,000 step over. And we're gonna see what that ends up doing. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, that results in a much better cut. Okay, spindle on, test two. Here's where Okay, uh, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know if that's a work holding situation. If it gets just enough vibration, it kicks it in and starts bouncing. I don't know what that is. Surface finish is decent. Tool is, uh, tool's warm, but not, not death. Uh, floor finish is not bad at all. Those chips look like chips. So it, it, it's cutting. It's doing a thing. Let's play with that step over again. Let's try to go lighter. Round number three. All right. a minute. Okay, 300 inches a minute and it's cutting. Ah! Let's go. 300 inches a minute. Come on. Got a little bit of tear out at the end there. So I don't think I want to cut at 300 inches a minute, but not opposed to the occasional little test pass here. What, what do you mean is that material remover rate? 22 cubic inches a minute, not bad. Update, since you last saw, we hit officially 300 inches a minute roughing, and I'm excited because now that means there's a solid chance I can actually machine instead of 300 inches a minute, 240, pretty comfortably, 240 inches a minute. So that's that's a killer material removal rate. I'm completely content with that. Next step is I gotta modify this baseboard a bit. When I was manufacturing the climbing hold, I ran into an issue of, as the part comes around, there is a fair amount of cutting forces being generated and there is a bit of a twisting for, uh, force on the part itself. And with the new one, I would like to set that up in such a way I can help mitigate that twisting force. So I'm gonna add a couple set screws coming up from the bottom that should hopefully, uh, not hopefully, will bolt into this guy from the bottom and hopefully prevent it from twisting. Part is officially loaded. We have the big ass tool loaded. And as it stands, I've gone back, revised the programming so that way I shouldn't run out of any Z clearance like we had in that first bit of test cut. So, without any further ado, start. Woo. Okay. All right, uh, Houston. <laughs> we have a problem. I 
Definitely crashed. That's obvious. <laughs> Completely grenaded my, uh, my work holding and definitely not too hot into the part itself. Wow, dude, I just tossed it. Bill looks fine. The advantage of 318 solid carbide tool. That bit like a mother. It must have had an issue between the amount of stock that I have and what's going on. So let's let's increase the stock size. Drop my feed rate to 30% because I don't have a ton of confidence at the present second. Let's get a tool swap. So the tool is definitely hot, but obviously I'm holding it. That is not terrible for all that roughing. Real question now is how well does my little parallel tool path or finishing work out? All right, tool is swapped, spindle on. finish and it's a complete hold got the chamfer all the parts are there and they did their stuff but yeah that guy uh that surface finish ain't gonna work that ain't gonna work let's try a finer step over So would you look at that? You uh, double your step over, you roughly double your finishing pass time. Um, I gotta be honest, not not an amazing surface finish. Also doesn't help too because the way that tool was already going, it had already pulled out a pretty good chunk of meat. So what was supposed to be the stabilized portion of the cut, which is the, you know, the, the stock remaining after the roughing pass is gone. So there's not enough meat there for the for the tool to really bite in and get a decent surface finish. Interestingly enough, though this part was definitely faster, I don't know that I would necessarily be able to say that was a super successful part. Um, in terms of final form factor and surface finish, this one is so much closer to a finished and usable part that I might have to reserve the finishing pass as something that is done with a quarter inch end mill. Obviously, the surface finish on this can't be a true um, accurate assessment of how the surface finish would have turned out had I done it following the roughing pass like I was supposed to do. Um, but, because uh, it's it's relatively comparable in terms of the, the top area where, where that surface finish went, but on the sides, it is notably better on my first attempt, which tells me um, I need to dial in that recipe for a finishing pass. Hello and sorry again for the interruption, but I have to make sure I actually get this on camera and make sure that it's it's fully out in the ether of YouTube that I don't condemn two parts of my actions today. First and foremost, when you're trying to push a machine, you have to make sure you double check everything. Check your stock size, check your zeros, check your tool length offset, all of the above, because especially as you start to get the speeds going, you don't have that much time to hit the oh shit button. And I clearly needed to. Second thing, when they say don't operate heavy machinery when drowsy, they mean it. This video took me quite a few hours to make and towards the end, I was just flat out tired, kind of zoning out, which is not the thing to be doing when you're proofing out a machine. So. I should have just stopped, gone, got a drink of water, coffee, take a sec, close my eyes, something, instead of just trying to push through it. I wanna make sure at least I've put that out there so it's been said, everybody's on the same page, and I'm gonna make sure to try to do that going forward. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Shit.